Hello, linear algebra folks. I want to give you an example of um, a spanning set for the space, the vector space consisting of polynomials in the variable t with real coefficients. There's no maximum degree here, and I'm considering zero to be part of my set. Mu agrees. We've got to have zero in there, else it wouldn't be a vector space. So what I'd like to do is I want to show you that I've got two spanning sets. There's one that to me seems like kind of the obvious one, all of the powers of t. And there's another one. In fact, there are lots of other ones that we could use. Uh, the second choice is going to be the set t, where t looks like 1, and the second element is 1 plus t, and the next element is 1 plus t plus t squared, and so on and so forth. And I'm taking all of these finite sums that start at 1 and add up all the powers of t up to n, and then n plus 1, and then n plus 2. So both of these are infinite. I hope you may have noticed that already. And in fact, um, these are two spanning sets for p, but I'd like to convince you of even more. I'd like to convince you that you can't span t with a finite set. So p does not have a finite spanning set. So here is the plan. The plan is... One, we're going to look at the span of S and show that's P. Two, we're going to look at the span of T and show that's also P. And three, we're going to look at the span of a, any finite collection of polynomials and show that that can't possibly be P. There's going to be something in P that we're not able to span. All right, get ready. Here we go. Okay, I want to show that S spans P. So luckily... We have theorem 4.4, which tells us that the span of a subset of P is a subspace of P. And that means that, in particular, the span of S is a subset of P. So all we need to do is show that P is contained in the span of S. So we've only got one containment argument that we've got to do. So we start by considering an element, P of T. That's just some polynomial in my set P. And let's write it out. P of t looks like a to the d, t to the d, plus a sub d minus 1, t to the d minus 1, plus so on and so forth. And this is, you know, the way that you've thought about polynomials for probably as long as you've known about polynomials. And this, just to point something out, this is a degree d polynomial in our vector space P. So I guess I kind of want to claim that it's evident without too much thought, that this is already a linear combination of 1, t, t squared, t to the d minus 1, t to the d, right? I've sort of picked off where those things show up in here. And the coefficients are real numbers, so I've got real number multiples of powers of t that I've added together. That's just a linear combination of the first d elements of s. And since I've written p of t, this little 